You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. Hello, my lovely friends, and welcome back to the Ms. Artastic Podcast. I am your host, Kathleen McGivern, and yes, I am Ms. Artastic, and I create art resources, lessons, and YouTube videos for kids. I curate and write articles for the Ms. Artastic blog, which you can find at MsArtastic.com. I create weekly drawing videos for kids on the Ms. Artastic YouTube channel. I create these podcasts. I also have my membership for art teachers called the Artastic Collective, which is going to be opening for enrollment in August. So check that out. So it opens twice a year, once in August and once in January. So make sure you get on that wait list at ArtasticCollective.com. And if you need art resources or lessons, this, of course, is the place to be. From my membership to my Teachers Pay Teacher store, Ms. Artastic, I can provide you with anything you need to teach a stellar art lesson. In this episode, I am going to talk about who artist Ted Harrison is, and I'll give you some ideas for Ted Harrison art lessons that you can do with your students. Let's learn about amazing artist Ted Harrison and ideas for art lessons that you can teach that are inspired by his style of making art. Let's get into it. One curator said he didn't want my work in his gallery because it was so simple, even children understood it. I thought, what a wonderful tribute, Ted Harrison. Ted Harrison's Early Life Edward Hardy Harrison is one of Canada's most well-known artists. Born on 28th August 1926 in a village of England, he is widely praised among the Canadians for his love of the land and people of the Yukon, a beautiful territory in Canada. Ted's early interest in art is credited to the support and encouragement of his parents, especially his mother, who had interests in fashion designing and photography. They supported him throughout the school, and his grammar teachers also recognized his talents and urged him to go and seek art education. So, he went to Hartlepool, I hopefully said that right, Hartlepool College of Arts in 1943. He studied there for some time when the Second World War interrupted and he had to stop, but later on he continued his education in arts and got a degree in design in 1950. Ted Harrison's Career Soon after his degree in arts, he was awarded a certificate in teaching and he pursued this career for 28 years, going to different parts of the world, including Malaysia and New Zealand, until he got settled in a small town in the Yukon with his wife and son. Norman Cornish has been Ted's biggest influence in painting, as he regards it as his lifelong quest to paint people and places. But other than Cornish, his greatest influence has been his hometown in the Yukon. He showed his painting, his sorry, he showed his first painting in 1969 at the Public Library in Whitehorse and thus started his career as a painter. His paintings can be found in private and public collections in Canada, New Zealand, Japan, Germany, and the United States of America. Some of his achievements. In 1987, he received the Order of Canada for his contribution to Canadian culture. In 1991, he was awarded an honorary doctorate from the University of Athabasca. In 1998, he received an honorary doctorate in the Fine Arts from University of Victoria. And finally, in 2002, he received a Distinguished Alumni Award from 
the University of Alberta. Importance of Teaching Arts and Artists So art is the name of varied visual, auditory and performing human activities that can be simply regarded as the form of communication. As important as it is for us to learn the arts, it is also very important for us to teach arts to our kids as it is proven from research that early learning of the child through the arts it helps in better brain development. Art classes will not prepare kids for the test and practical stuff, but they can bring in opportunities for them to enhance their creative and rational skills as well as allowing them to problem solve and explore their own identity. Other than that, art influences children's psychology and makes them able to understand and express their individuality. And just like the uniqueness and individuality of the work of Ted Harrison, how he stood for his talent and interest and was taught and supported by everyone around him. Ted Harrison Art Lesson Ideas for Kids Landscape Art Of course, with exploring Ted Harrison, you can definitely explore creating lovely landscapes in the style of Ted Harrison. You can explore a range of Ted Harrison artworks with your students, and students can design a Ted Harrison landscape based on the style of the artist. Explore the fluid and organic way that he uses line and color to create his artworks. All you have to do is get on the internet or look through books with your students to get inspired. I love using acrylic paints with older students or I use oil pastels and watercolor paints with younger students because of course it gives the similar effect but is a lot more friendly for younger kids. Um, this is also a wonderful way to explore the element of art value, but also color, with kids as many of his works explore a limited selection of color and instead rely on the use of value to define the different areas of the artwork. So of course you can teach kids about hue, how to make tints, which is of course color plus white, and uh, shades, or you can also teach tone where you're mixing it with gray. So that's a lovely way to teach kids how to mix color and then also use them to create a, vera a range of color in an artwork, so I love that. All right, the next one is uh, you can create a Ted Harrison whale artwork with your students. So with your primary students, you can create a Ted Harrison whale artwork inspired by his artworks. So you can totally look up Ted Harrison whale artwork and find some ideas for this. In this lesson, students could use acrylic or tempura paints and oil pastels to create a landscape artwork featuring a whale inspired by Canadian artist Ted Harrison. So I have a project available for this that teaches you how to, how you and your students can create a Ted Harrison whale art project. And it is a lesson that is um, recommended for kindergarten to grade three. And of course, it will allow them to explore the element of art value. And you can find this ready to use Ted Harrison Whale art lesson for your primary art students, complete with a video art tutorial, a rubric for marking, a lesson plan, a finished example, a step-by-step -step drawing handout, and of course, all the reflection pages that go with it. Um, to allow your students to create this piece successfully in my Teachers Pay Teacher Store, Ms. Artastic, or with your Artastic Collective membership in the Artist and Art History section, just click Ted Harrison when that becomes available for you. Um, you can find the direct link to this resource for on my Teachers Pay Teacher Store or to the Artastic Collective if you're interested in becoming a member when membership opens up in August or January, depending on when you're listening to this in the show notes of this podcast or which is on my blog mizartastic.com find the link in the description of this video or episode depending on where you're listening the next is a ted harrison orca artwork okay i love ted harrison's orca 
So I live in British Columbia, which of course is below the Yukon. So we have similar similarities, but not the same. Uh, I live in a much more mild climate, let me tell you. <laughs> so a lot of his artwork and the artwork of Emily Carr is sometimes a direct reflection of where I live. So at some point, sometimes he had come down the coast and painted some things down here. And of course, so did Emily Carr. Uh, and for me, I get super, super, super inspired. Um, I connect to the subject matter that they depicted because I see it around me. As well, I love how they're both, both of their art was influenced by other important artists and also continues, their own art, continues to influence the art of others. And they're just both so cool, honestly. <laughs> Ted Harrison's Orca is just a symbol of BC and the Yukon. Uh, we have orca murals everywhere. So if you go to Victoria ever on the island, you'll see these orca paintings um, painted on sides of buildings everywhere. Orcas populate our oceans, as they do, of course, other places, but quite a bit here. Um, and they're often or are called killer whales for a reason. Not because they often hurt humans, but they do hunt in packs and they're extremely intelligent and no one messes with an orca. And there is a reason why our waters are not inhabited by the great white sharks. Yes, orcas. And it's pretty cold, which great white sharks don't quite like. But climate is changing and that could bring them up the coast to our waters. But with orcas in the water, uh, they wouldn't be the top predator, believe it or not. Orcas own great whites. <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to continue rant about nature because, okay, I love talking about animals. Honestly, I can rant forever about nature and animals and stuff. Gardening and animals. I have lots of random facts on those. Other useful information, maybe not, but that I can... <laughs> I can talk about it forever and maybe you can relate. Anyway, uh, so check out Ted Harrison's Orca Paintings for inspiration for an art lesson with your students. For a complete ready to use Orca artwork, check out my Ted Harrison Orca art lesson and my TPT store or with your Artastic Collective membership in the Ted Harrison bundle um, when it's released. Find the direct link to this resource in the show notes for this podcast in my blog, Ms. Artastic, or if you're on TeachersPayTeachers.com, search Ms. Artastic and click the Artist and Art History category in my store on the left side in the little categories column and you'll find Ted Harrison. All right, the next idea is the Ted Harrison Raven artwork. So ravens occur a lot in his artworks. Um, for older students, you can totally explore more complex Ted Harrison artworks with them. And you can mix acrylic paint to create a range of tints, hues, shades, and tones to explore the element of art value and also color, of course, right? While understanding and learning his style of creating. So to be honest, I think this is a really great opportunity for kids to explore painting, especially as if, um, sorry, if it is one of the first times you're teaching painting, I think this is a really great entryway into that, right? So I um, have students find a complex Ted Harrison. So this is again for older kids, right? Have them find a complex Ted Harrison uh, artwork that they want to paint or use as inspiration for their own design and let them create an artwork using acrylic paint and let them explore mixing paint while being inspired by the artwork. Let them create their own version instead of asking them to replicate. They should be allowed to have creative freedom and the opportunity to explore their own artist flavor, as I like to call it. For a complete ready-to-use art lesson for your older students, check out my Ted Harrison Raven Art Lesson that features a raven flying in a landscape in the Yukon Territory of Canada that allows students to create, sorry, explore creating value with paint 
And you can find this resource, of course, in my Teachers Pay Teacher Store or with your Artastic Collective membership. Again, find the direct link in the show notes of my blog. Well, that's all for this episode. Explore Ted Harrison, the lovely artist with your students. This is Kathleen McGiverin signing out. Uh-uh.